Early cancer screening in vulnerable population, that's a vast topic. Uh, uh, difficult to cover in 20 minutes. I'll try my best. Remember, your lifestyle can lead to cancer. Lead a healthy life to beat cancer. As per the distribution of diseases, cancer comes only second. A short while ago, you found Dr. Shachang Yoshi had said that CVD was the commonest cause, but cancer closely follows and is the second both in males and females. Key facts in cancer prevention. Please remember most cancers develop as a result of exposure to modifiable risk factors. Most cancers have a long detectable preclinical phase which allows for early detection and effective treatment. And who estimates that 40% of all cancer deaths are preventable? Prevention we all know is primary, secondary, or tertiary. Primary directed to the susceptibility stage. For example, using disposable needles to prevent AIDS or the human papillomavirus vaccine for prevention of cervical cancer. Secondary prevention directed to the subclinical stage. Screen for cervical cancer with pap smear to prevent long-term cervical cancer. Tertiary prevention is directed to clinical stage. We may go for primary tumor removal to prevent metastasis. Primary prevention includes vaccination, avoiding tobacco, skin protection, avoiding alcohol, keeping a healthy weight, a healthy diet, decreasing exposure to environmental carcinogens, rather on asbestos, etc. Selected cancer screening recommendations for the average risk population as propounded by the American Cancer Society. For breast cancer in women aged 20 to 39 years, they may go for breast self-examination regularly or we may go for the clinical breast examination at least every three years. For women aged 40 years or more, breast self-examination should be done regularly, clinical breast examination annually or the mammogram annually. For cervical cancer in women aged 21 to 29 years, pap smear examination, either the conventional one or the liquid cytology every three years. For women aged 30 to 65 years, pap and HPV DNA test every five years or pap alone every three years. Women aged more than 65 years, no screening required if there are already three negative pap tests or more than two negative HPV and PAF quotas within the last 10 years, and the most recent obviously occurring in the last five years. No screening obviously in required for hysterectomized patients. For colorectal cancer, we usually start screening above the age of 50 years. We may go for the fecal local blood test or the fecal immunochemical test annually or the flexible sigmoidoscopy every five years or the DCB every five years colonoscopy every 10 years, or CT colonography every five years. Lung cancer, we usually screen men and women aged 55 to 74 years. Current or former smokers who quit less than 15 years ago in good health and more than 30 pack years of smoking history. Discussion with healthcare provider about screening may be done with a low dose helical CT scan. In prostate cancer, usually screen men aged 50 years or more with at least 10 year life expectancy, consideration of direct rectal examination and the PSA does a prostate specific antigen after informed clinical decision making process with the healthcare provider. Coming to lung cancer screening, the five year survival rate for stage one disease is to the tune of 50 to 90% while it drops to only 3 to 6% in the stage 4 disease. This suggests the possibility that lung cancer deaths could be greatly reduced if the primary tumor could be found and treated before it has spread. Who should be screened? Low risk patients aged less than 50 years or less than, less than 20 pack years of smoking need not be screened. Same for the moderate risk ones, 50, less than 50 years or 20 or more pack years no other risk factors, you need not go for screening, but you should screen those in the age group 
of 55 to 77 years of age, having 30 or more pack years of smoking and has quit in the last 14 years, or a current smoker. And the other group would be 50 years of age or older, 20 or more pack years of smoking, and having other risk factors. And both these groups should be screened yearly. Lung cancer screening, the benefits are, is reduces the mortality, obviously, quality of life benefits, and may prevent more than 12,000 premature deaths due to lung cancer per year. Risks, false positive cases may be up to 10 to 43%, may lead to unnecessary testing, unnecessary invasive procedures, increased cost, and decreased quality of life due to mental anguish. There's also the risk of radiation exposure. Now coming to the randomized controlled trials of elder city, you'll find that the power studies, that's the famous NLST study or the Nelson study, both showed that the low dose cities reduces the lung cancer related mortality. But the unpowered studies do not show the same and so it's still debated, though the the um, usual recommendation is now that we should go for the low dose CT as the randomized trials have proved. For colon cancer, screenings may be done with the scope. You may go for the CT scan or the CT colonography or you can go for the stool test. Colorectal cancer again increases sharply with age, especially up the age of 50. And the development of the disease is known to progress over years. You'll be stunned to know that it has a 90% relative five-year survival rate when it's localized. And it drops to only 14% when there is distant metastasis. Thus, early diagnosis has a large impact on survival. Risk assessment score is based on whether the patient has a personal history. There's history of adenoma over or a sessile serrated polyp history of colorectal cancer in the family, history of previous colorectal cancers, history of inflammatory bowel disease, that's ulcerative colitis or the Crohn's disease, or a positive family history. Screenings beyond the age of 45 years, usually after the age of 50 years. Screening procedures include the all-pervasive colonoscopy. It's done every 10 years. It's a tier one recommendation. Sensitivity for adenomas more than six millimeters is to the tune of 75 to 93 percent, while the specificity is 94 percent. And for adenomas more than one, one centimeter, the sensitivity is to the tune of 89 to 98 percent, and the specificity 89 percent. Merits include prevention by treating the malignant lesions at an early stage, high sensitivity for the colorectal cancers and precancerous lesions, and long screening intervals of 10 years. Demerits, obviously the tedious bowel preparation, operator dependent, maybe risk of perforation, bleeding, aspiration, or even splenic injury. The other T1, tier one recommendation is the fecal immunochemical test, which however should be done annually. For colorectal cancer, the sensitivity is 74% and it's 96% specific. For advanced abnormal detection, it's 24% sensitive and 94% specific. It is non-invasive, relatively low cost, reasonably high one-time sensitivity, but the demerits include a frequency of testing, colonoscopy needed if positive and low sensitivity and for precancerous lesions. The other tests, that's the multi-targeted stool DNA test, CT colonography, flexible sigmoidoscopy. These are tier two recommendations. I'm not going to the details of those. Coming to the prostate cancer screening, the two common tests are the PSA and the direct rectal examination. The European randomized study of screening for prostate cancer enrolled more, like, more than 162,000 patients between the age of 50 and 70 year, year, 74 years of age from seven European nations and found a prostate cancer specific mortality reduction to the tune of 20%. PSA screening leads to increased prostate cancer diagnosis. But unfortunately, there is no reduction in mortality even for prostate cancer or even for all-cause mortality as per the studies which I'll sh show later. Screening as per the National Comprehensive Cancer Network guidelines, 
baseline evaluation, history and physical examination, including a family cancer history, family or personal history of high-risk germline mutations, history of prostate disease, African ancestry, medications. Risk assessment, start risk and benefit discussion with a baseline PSA, strongly consider baseline digital rectal examination, divided into three groups for patients aged 45 to 75 years and average risk, or age group 40 to 75 years with those having African ancestry, germline mutations, or suspicious family history, go for the prostate-specific antigen. If it's less than one, AM, one nanogram per ml, repeat testing at two to four year intervals. If it's between one to three nanogram per ml, repeat testing at one to two year intervals. And if it's more than three nanogram per ml, with a suspicious direct rectal examination, you may go, off, go for the biopsy. For patients aged more than 75 years, go for the PSA if it's less than nine, four nanogram per ml and the direct rectal examination is normal. Repeat testing is select patients may be done at one to four year intervals. If the PSA is more than four nanogram per ml or very suspicious direct rectal examination findings, you may go for the biopsy. If the patient is older or having a life expectancy of less than 10 to 15 years, they may not be screened. These are the recommendations of the European Association of Urology, the American Urological Association, and the US Special Task Force. And you'll find all of them say that we may not go for a screen if the life expectancy is less than 10 to 15 years of age. Also do not screen if the age is more than 70 years, preferably to be screened between 55 and 69 years of age. A uh, risk adaptive strategy should be taken with follow-up intervals of two years. PSA more than one nanogram per ml at 40 years of age, screen at two years. PSA more than two nanogram per ml at 60 years of age, you may screen every two years. Postpone, postpone follow-up to eight years in those not at risk. These are the studies for prostate cancer screening and mortality, and you can find all these studies show that PSA screening probably has little or no effect on all-cause mortality. I'm not going to the details of the study, a very busy slide. Also, the study on the quality of life, that also showed that PSA screening may have little or no difference on the quality of life. Breast cancer screening, one in eight women will develop breast cancer in their lifetime, is the second leading cause of cancer death among women, second only to lung cancer, and survival rates with early detection are high. That's why we should screen. Recommendation, according to the American College of Surgeons, yearly mammograms at age 45 to 55 years, every other year thereafter. According to the American College of Obsgynies, yearly mammograms beginning at age 40, and as per the US Task Force Biennial Screening Mammography for women aged 50 to 74 years of age. Limitations and challenges, obviously patient education, health literacy, especially in our country, a language barrier, especially for us, we have more than 200 languages. Transportation, scheduling, fear of being built for services, patient follow-up, return to the clinic, limited funding through partners. This is a world map showing the estimated age standardized incident rates as per 2018. India remains somewhere in between 11.5 to 18.5 age standardized incident rates per one lakh population. Life course approach to cervical cancer prevention and control. For girls aged nine to 14 years, we should go for the HPV vaccination. For girls and boys as appropriate, health information and warnings about tobacco use. Sex education tailored to age and culture. Condom protection, promotion and provision for those engaged in sexual activity or male circumcision. For secondary prevention in women aged more than 30 years of age, we should try to screen and treat in a single visit. That improves compliance, that improves screening. Point of care, HPV testing, followed by immediate treatment, on-site treatment. For tertiary prevention, go for ablative surgery, radiotherapy, chemotherapy, followed by palliative care in cases of invasive cancer. Targets for 2030, we visualize a world without cervical cancer. Our goal would be 
to below four cases of cervical cancer per one lakh woman years. 90% of girls fully vaccinated with HPV vaccine by 15 years of age remains our aim. 70% of women screened with an HPV test at 35 and 45 years of age and all managed appropriately and 30% reduction in mortality from cervical cancer. This is the age standardized mortality rates for cervical cancer in 2018. You can see again here also India is somewhere in between with a rate of 5.5 to 9.4 age standardized mortality rate per 1 lakh population. Strategy towards elimination of cervical cancer as a global public health problem, increase HPV vaccination, increase screening and treatment of precancerous solution, and increase coverage of diagnosis and treatment for invasive cancer and palliative care. The guiding principles, life course and public health approach, social justice and equity, integrated people-centered services to attain these goals. Coming to carcinoma cervix, in India, there are 1,25,000 1, new patients per year, incidence between 15 to 48 per 1 lakh population. It is preventable if screened early through health education or screening programs. Risk factors include the early age at intercourse, repeated frequent births, multiple sexual partners, HPV infections, low socioeconomic status, especially in India, or the high incidences of smoking. Prevention, mainly through health education to prevent the factors in the, given in the previous slide, and also screening programs. Results of screening, if you screen for cervical cancer and it's detected in stage one, there's a 85% survival rate. If it's detected at stage four, the five-year five survival rate drops to 15%. Coming to head and neck cancer, which is very much present in India, it also affects 50,000 people in the U.S. each year. It's curable 50% 50, 50 of the time. The causes include tobacco and smoking, alcohol, sexually transmitted viruses, the HPV, environmental factors, and the hereditary factors. Mainly detected by visual examination. So I'm showing you the slide. The first one, the top left one, is showing the submucous fibrosis, the carcinoma tongue, the first one picture is involves the anterior two-third of the tongue, the next one, the lateral surface of the tongue. The lower left corner shows the cancer of the buccal mucosa, and the lower right shows the carcinoma of the buccal, uh, of the lip, carcinoma of the lip. So, the, so these are relatively common major public health importance in India. In world over, there are 10 million new cancer cases and half of the patients die. In industrialist countries, 3 to 5 percent people are affected. Developing countries, it's 40 percent. In India, it's 12.6 per 1 lakh population, the standardized incidence rate. About 2.5 lakh new cases are detected each year in the Southeast Asian nations. In India is the leading cause of cancer and among males and amongst ladies it is the third leading cause. As compared to the developing nations, the oral cancer is 2.5 times more common in Indian males and four times more common in Indian females. And the tongue and buccal mucosa are involved in the males, while in the females it mainly involves the palate and the buccal mucosa. It has been remarked that buccal mucosa, lower alveolus, retromolar trigon, and all these are grouped together as the gingivo buccal complex. That's the typical Indian oral cancer that we see over the years. They constitute more than 60% of the cancers. Mostly squamous cell carcinomas, 98%, and the intraoral distribution reveal buccal mucosa to be the most common, followed by anterior two-third of the tongue. Prevention, mainly avoidance of the known etiological factors. This is particularly important because oral cancer is one of the few cancers with a high potential for prevention. And 65 to 80% of oral cancer is environmental. So lifestyle modification is a must. Screening method is oral visual inspection. That's why I showed you all the pictures. Mainly screened through visual examination. Age, 
all age groups above 15 years. Frequency one to three times in lifetime, every five years or every two years, depending on the resources. If you have huge resources, you may go for every two years. But in India, in the rural areas, usually one to three times in a lifetime. Five steps, OBI negative, follow up in two, uh, 12 months, OBI positive, evaluation by doctor, and go for the oral punch biopsy, or in high resource settings, we may go for the excision biopsy. Treatment, surgical excision, or laser excision in tertiary centers, post-treatment follow-up, up to 12 months. Approach, education, regulatory, and service approach, legislation, prohibit sale of tobacco to minors, place health warning signs, prohibit advertising of tobacco products. Till a few years ago, most of the Bollywood films showed smoking screens, not the same today. And please remember, cancers cure smoking. If you do not live smoking, if you have oral cancer, you won't be able to smoke, and you will be forced to live smoking. Oral cancer among the young, grant proposal is, this is a grant proposal to bring together a group of international researchers from US, Europe, and Asia through collaborative partnerships to conduct last slide, according to a common protocol to address the rising incidence of cancer of the tongue and mouth among youth in different parts of the world. So we all have to move together. Please remember, cancer screening detects cancer before symptoms appear. Remember that it's the second common cause of death after the cardiovascular diseases world over. It reduces morbidity and mortality if cancer is screened early. And of course, if you screen early, it also improves the quality of life. Thank you all for kind attention.